Hello again and welcome back to our course on SharePoint Foundation 2013. Now we're going to add some content to the Team Talk subsite. And we're going to do it first of all with a very straightforward piece of content. We're going to put an announcement onto the site, just welcoming the team to the new Team Talk site. Now in order to do this, we're going to need to use the announcement app. And in the process of doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about apps in general in relation to SharePoint. Now, a typical SharePoint site will have functionality which is made up of a lot of components. And for each of the components, the functionality of that component is encapsulated in an app. And apps basically contain pieces of functionality. Now, to put an announcement on the site, we're going to use the Announcement app. If I click on Site Contents, you'll see that basically at the moment I have very little content within the site. I've got these buttons, I'll explain those in a minute, but the first one is Add an App. And with this, I can add an app to the site. Now when I click on that, I'll be given a list of the available apps. Some of these are free, some of them are paid, some of them are trial versions and so on. You probably won't see exactly the same list that I can see. They're arranged in pages down here. And what I'm going to do is scroll through and find the Announcements app. Now when you come to do the same thing on your system, take the time just to browse through and see the sort of apps that are available. We are going to be using some others throughout the course, so I'll be explaining a few of them as we go along. Now there I have the Announcements app with the picture of the megaphone. I'm going to click on that. Now when I want to add announcements, I'm going to need to pick a name for the particular type of announcement. I'm going to call this my Team News Announcement. So I'm going to click on Create. Now whenever a new app appears, you'll see that little new marker there, just to denote that it's new. And apart from the fact that this has now appeared amongst the available apps in my site contents, you may notice that in the quick launch I've now got a recent section. And the recent section contains Team News. Now, a little bit later on we'll be looking in some detail at lists. And Team News is a special kind of list. And you may want several of these announcements types of list within particularly a large site. So you may have one for the team, you may have another one for customers, you may have company announcements, finance announcements, and each of them may warrant its own list. Now we're going to talk about the actual configuration of this later on as well, but for the moment let's actually post an item of news. If I click, that takes me through to Team News and I can add a new announcement. So if I click on Add New Announcement, the title of the announcement is, there's my title, Team Talk is now live. So I've actually put in the body of the announcement. I'm also going to put in an expiry date for this item of news. Now I'm going to leave that on there for a little while. Note the little calendar control to the right there. I can choose a date, I'm going to say maybe the end of February this year, and then I'm going to click on Save. And what you can now see is that in my list, I have my first item of Team News. Now this is a situation in SharePoint where it's very important to understand what's going on, particularly if you're new to SharePoint. What you can see in front of you is a list. This is not how this list would appear generally to the users of this site at the moment. You're looking at the list so that you could edit the list or add a new announcement to it or indeed delete an announcement from it. Now while I'm still on this Team News list, 
Note the two tabs up here, Items and List. Let me click on List first. And that brings up a ribbon, and the ribbon contains a whole host of things that I could do to that particular list. For instance, I could connect to Outlook, I could export it to Excel, I could open the list with Access, all sorts of things that I can do. And indeed, some of those we're going to look at later on in the course. If I click on the Items tab, I have options to do things like add a new item. I can attach a file. I can do alerts related to messages, items in the list and so on. So again, a whole host of things that I can do. If I go down to the announcement that we've just added, click on the announcement. That takes me into the announcement. I can read the title. I can see the detail in the body. I can just close it if I want to, but I could also go in to edit the item. Now it is important to point out here again that whether any other users that can see what's in this list could edit an item in the list would depend on their permissions. But at the moment, as you know, I can do everything on this site, so I'm going to go in to edit that item. When I go in to edit the item, then I have a number of options, including the option to delete the item, or to do cut, copy and paste in the item. So again, many possibilities in terms of what I can do to an item in a list. Now, we're going to look at lists in a lot more detail in a couple of sections coming up, all the different things that you can do, so I won't dwell on lists themselves now. But hopefully you get the general idea that one of the mainstays of SharePoint is lists of things, and there are many things that you can do with lists of things. The one thing we haven't done with this list, though, is to show it on a page. And that's what we're going to do next. So I'm back at the Team Talk homepage here. One of the things I want to do now is to get rid of this block here, this block of icons, because this section of the team site is a default bit of content that gives you straightforward links through to the main things you might want to do with a new subsite. Things like sharing it, adding list libraries, changing the style, changing the branding and so on. Now we are going to be doing all these things, in fact one or two of them we've made a start on already. So I'm just going to remove this from the page. So there's a remove this link there. That's now gone. Now notice that on the Team Talk homepage I currently only have a list of documents and in fact the list of documents is empty. If I click on site contents the list libraries and other apps that are currently here are listed. Now we've used the Add an App button, we used it to add the Announcements app just now, and the Team News is in place. On Site Assets, which we do have, all we have at the moment is the logo that's used as our PM logo. Documents. Documents, we don't have any at the moment, we will have before too long. And then Site Pages just list the pages within this site. Don't worry about this how to use this library page. So basically that's currently the content of the Team Talk site. There's not much in it. There is a facility at the bottom as you know to add a new subsite, but that's basically what we've got. Now on the home page, what I now want to do is to show that announcements list. And in order to do that, I need to add something to the home page called a web part. And in general terms, we show the content on our pages using web parts. The documents content here is shown in a web part. So what I need to do is to add a web part to this page. I click on Page. I click on Edit and I go into edit mode for this page. A ribbon appears. One of the options is to format text, which I'm not going to do at this stage. The other one is to do an insert. And what I'm going to do on this insert is to insert a web part. Now, there is a whole range of web parts that are available, and there are also 
app content from this site onto the page. Now, if I click on web parts for just for a moment, you'll see that there is a categorized list of the sorts of web parts that I can put onto a page. So, for instance, if I look at the blog category, I can put blog archives, blog notifications, blog tools, content roll up, forms, etc. Now, we're going to be looking at many of these later on, but what I really want here is an app part, and the app part will correspond to one of the existing apps. Now we currently have three documents, site assets, site pages, plus the new one we added, which was Team News. Now with announcements, they have specially formatted types of web parts. I'm not going to go into all of that now. I'm going to accept defaults, and all I'm going to say is Team News Add. And that will add an appropriate web part to the page. And as you can see here, it's appeared above the documents part. Now, if I'm happy with what's happened, if I just click on Home, to save your changes before continuing, click OK. To continue without saving changes, click Cancel. So I'm going to click OK. And now you can see on my Team Talk home page, I have the announcements list. Now you may well think that it doesn't look particularly elegant or informative at the moment. I really don't want you to worry about how these things look at the moment. That's something we're going to turn our attention to later on. The important thing is that the team news is now on the home page and for me at least I have the option from here to add a new announcement or edit the list and so on. And in fact, although I've only got a very small subset of the information here, the title, and in this case when it was last modified, I can use the links here to give me access to the full item. So I can click on view item and that will let me read all the detail in that announcement. Now as I say, do not worry about how that looks at the moment. We're going to give that some more attention later on. The main thing is that we've created a list and we're now showing that list in a web part on one of the pages of our site. And this is one of the most fundamental things that you're going to do early on in your use of SharePoint. Now I'd just like to cover one other thing in this unit based on what we've seen so far. And that is to show you how the site now looks to somebody who doesn't have the full control that I have. I've actually added a user to the system. I'll explain this in more detail later on when we look at users and permissions in detail. This user is one of my colleagues, Diane, and Diane has the lowest standard permission level. So she's basically classed as a visitor to the site. So let's see what Diane sees when she logs in. So as you can now see, Diane is logged in. And although at the top level site, Diane can see the quick launch on the left for example. There are no edit link buttons and if Diane clicks on gear she doesn't even get the site settings options. If she clicks on site content she goes to the page but she can't actually add an app herself. Now if she goes back to team talk Again, she can see the team news and she can see the documents, but she can't add team news. And if she selects an item of team news, when she goes into it, she can't actually edit it. The ribbon is there, but the relevant commands are disabled. So whereas Diane can see a lot of the content, she can do very little to either add content or to modify what's there. Now, as I pointed out earlier in the course, exactly what an individual or a group of individuals can do governed by permissions and permission levels, and we'll be looking at that in quite a bit of detail later on in the course. But for now, I hope that gives you a good idea of how our site now looks to visitors. That's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one.